Hello everybody and welcome to a new video of Planet Zoo where we're going to be discussing the Continental Animal Pack. This is sort of like a finale animal pack idea with animals coming from around the world. Now, the original idea of this pack was to have an animal representing each previous DLC. But I thought, why not just include as many highly requested habitat animals as possible? So I've just gone down the new 2024 meta wishlist and picked out a selection of animals as to species that I think could fit well in this pack. Now I'm not including animals from previous ideas, animals like black howler monkeys or cockerel sparkers, no no no, they are in their select packs but they may not even show up in those packs so they could be potentially included here too. But as for now these are the animals that I will be including in the continental animal pack. So let's get into it. Starting off with the animals. We have the wild goat, the markhor of the Central Asian Highlands and Himalayas. The muskox of the Arctic Tundra. Grey crown crane of African grasslands and wetlands. The gold lion tamarind, a colourful small monkey from the Atlantic forests of Brazil. The Patagonia Mara, which is a rodent that is related to the capybara, with long legs to it that are well adapted to a grassland lifestyle. The Great White Pelican. Now, I was originally going for other pelicans, but I can see why people would want this. This is a very colourful pe pelican species. I was about to say penguin, but no, it's a, it's a pelican. But they are a very striking addition that I would personally love to see in the game, and the with the inclusion of the mute swan and the Eurasia Animal Pack, pelicans have become more probable. The walrus, one of the largest pinnipeds in the world and an iconic species of the Arctic. Short beaked echidnas, a small monotreme from the Australian forests and one of the only monotremes in the world. The shoebill, which has a name, the shoebill stork but they are in fact not a stork, being more related to pelicans. Mantle Jerezas are a monkey I would personally really love to see in the game, as when it comes to primates, each monkey has its own distinct look, and the Mantle Jereza has one of the most striking appearances out of them all. And they're very common in captivity, and I would personally love to build a habitat for them and see how Frontier would handle the hanging hair mechanics on such an agile and active creature. The Greater Rhea, a ratite from South America, and the only ratite left in the game that we would really need. The Gelada of the Ethiopian Highlands. The Mandarin Duck, the most colourful of all ducks in the world. The palace's cat is a small cat from the Tibetan Plateau and Himalayas. Roseate spoonbills are the wetlands of South America, Central and North America. Golden pheasants, a very colourful species from China's mountainous forests. The scarlet ibis is also here, a very striking addition to any wetland habitat themed around South America. The Guyana and Squirrel Monkey would also be a great addition to spice up the primate roster as these guys are very common in captivity and I would love to see a Squirrel Monkey added. The toughest animal in the world, the Honey Badger, though I think I did include it in my Equatorial Animal Pack. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, it would fit well here as well. The Reeves Muntjac, a species of saber-toothed deer, as they are often dubbed. But mont jacks and musk deer, those tusks are actually more for display than anything else. Rock hyraxes, a relative of elephants, believe it or not. African spurred tortoise, the third largest tortoise in the world after the two giant tortoises of offshore islands. The serval, which is a small cat from Africa with distinct spots and a few little stripes with large ears and a small head. Helmets of guinea fowl, a species of ground fowl that is well known from the African grasslands and a common sight in zoos. Parentes are Australia's largest lizard and I did 
I might just bring this up. I did see that they were classed as rare in captivity. Now, I do live in Australia, so I guess I'm a little bit biased, but I see Parentes at almost every zoo I visit. I've been to Taronga Zoo. They have a Parenti. Sydney Zoo, they have a Parenti. The Australian Reptile Park, they also have a Parenti. And I know that there are a few zoos over in the States that have Parentis too. I think LA Zoo and is it the Henry Dawley Zoo's Desert Dome? I think they might have them too. But they're not as rare as some of the other animals I saw on the list. But, uh, yeah, I don't think they would should be classed as rare whatsoever. Southern Tamanduas, a small anteater from South America that also inhabits the trees. Matchy's tree kangaroo I put here as they are a possible alternative to the Goodfellas tree kangaroo that I included in my equatorial animal pack. And, hey, they are also as, they're pretty much as common as Goodfellas in captivity, if not a little bit less because I've seen overseas zoo rosters and Matchy's shows up every now and then, but the Goodfellas I think dominates it. But they would be a cool addition nonetheless and pretty easy to make. You've just got to recolor the Goodfellas pretty much. Maybe make it slightly fluffier too. Southern ground hornbill would be a great addition as many African birds just have a very cool look and an African birds pack is much easier to make than that for other continents as there are so many cool birds to choose from. You've got secretary birds, you've got the ground hornbills, marabou storks and all sorts. It's a very, very cool continent of birds. Alligator snapping tail is a potential exhibit slot. And these guys are one of the largest freshwater turtles in the world and a very cool looking one. And personally, plants who can't end until we at least get one of the snapping turtles, whether it be the alligator or the common snapping turtle. Golden Snubnose monkeys would also be a cool addition to the game as these guys have distinct blue faces and golden coloration. And the males also have a cape too, so that would be a pretty cool addition as well. The Greater Roadrunner would also be another cool bird from North America, and we don't have a lot of desert North American species. We did get the Collared Peccary, but other than that, there's not too many others that we could really make habitats for. But the Greater Roadrunner is possibly the most iconic from the Sonoran. It was Southern Elephant Seal on the Manor Wish list, but Northern Elephant Seals are the only Elephant Seal that exists in captivity, and if we were to get one of them, I would go for the northern elephant seal because at least you could put a bit, a bit more sand in their enclosure. American flamingos would also be a striking addition to the game as these guys are much pinker than the greater flamingo that we currently have. And it would also be a good opportunity to rework the flamingo model a bit to be more in line with the American species. My top pick if we were to get a twilight pack animal in the original idea of the continental animal pack the ayah is by far a quintessential nocturnal animal as they are so bizarre and well adapted to a nocturnal life and yeah they, they would be a really cool addition and could potentially have their own unique enrichment item now that we have the, the mute swan the black swan of australia would also be a great addition as i see this guy a lot and they would be a brilliant addition to the game to spice up the new area of waterfowl that we could potentially get. Garanook are an, another bizarre antelope with a long neck and they will also stand on their hind legs to browse in the high trees. Another small antelope is the Kirk's Dick Dick, a tiny little antelope about the same size as a house cat that would be a really interesting addition to like a small Africa section to your zoos. Pierre David's deer are one of the only animals that exist, is extinct in the wild, but have been having reintroduction efforts, much like the scimitar horned oryx. So I don't know how long that extinct in the wild label will be placed upon them for. So they will potentially be in the wild thriving once again. The alpine marmot is perhaps people's most requested European animal left in the game. We didn't get them in the Eurasia animal pack, unfortunately, but they would be a great addition nonetheless to really spice up that alpine theme, potentially in a Highlands pack, I don't know. 
Great Akudu are another great antelope that I'd love to see in the game. They are just a, such a magnificent animal, particularly the males with their huge horns. And they're sort of like a beefed up Nyala almost, but they are very common in zoos. I've seen them in a lot of rosters when I've visited the websites of many zoos around the world. And yeah, I would love to add these guys to any savanna exhibit. They're just beautiful animals. Nile crocodiles are, an all, are also another great African animal that we're currently missing, as Africa does not currently have a crocodile in the game, and the Nile crocodile is by far the most famous. And yeah, I would love to see this guy add to the game, as they are one of the quintessential riverine animals of Africa that I would love to be out of place next to a hippo. At least next to a hippo exhibit, I should say, because you don't want to put them together. <laughs> Burrowing owls would be an interesting addition. They do spend a lot of their time on the ground and in trees, but they do fly as well. But so do swans, so I guess you could theoretically just keep them on the ground and every now and then they'll fly up onto a higher perch. But uh, yeah, that's how they could work. And the same with the secretary bird too. That's another animal that has a very similar behavior to the burrowing owl, except for living in burrows, but secretary birds nest in trees. So potentially allowing the secretary bird to fly around a little bit would be a good addition to that animal. But the burrowing owl would be a great animal to see in the game. I would love to see Frontier bring this little animal to life. Marabou stork would be a great addition to the game as we also don't have any storks. But the Marabou stork is by far probably the most famous in the world as they are known for their vulturine aesthetic. They're sort of the vulture of the storks with a bald head to keep their feathers from being draped in blood when feeding on a carcass. But they are also very common in zoos and a quintessential scavenger to be used in ed educational presentations. Tanukis are a symbol of Japanese culture and would be a brilliant addition to the game as they are also one of the only canines known to climb trees. So they would be a very interesting animal to look after. Another animal that I have not often talked about, if not at all, the yellow-throated marten is one of the largest weasels in the world, aside from the otters and wolverines and badgers, of course, but they are, I think, the largest of the martens, or just the... Okay, I don't know really. <laughs> I want to I want to say they're the largest of the weasels, but they're not exactly. But yeah, you know what I mean. But they would be a great addition as they have a very distinct color palette with the black head and black feet and the golden coloration of their bodies. That would be a brilliant addition. I would love to see them. They would be a very cool addition to an arboreal habitat. Wild turkeys are another quintessential symbol of culture. Um, representing Thanksgiving in the United States, and were once almost hunted to extinction in the wild, but have since made a great comeback. And I would love to see the turkey in the game. That ambience would be very interesting to listen to. Nilgai are another antelope that I'd love to see in the game, and one of the only antelope in Asia. And I think they're the biggest antelope in Asia, and one of the biggest in the world too. But they are often seen in safari parks, so this guy would be a perfect addition to any safari park or potentially even a large Indian grassland exhibit alongside Indian rhinos and the black buck I discussed in the equatorial animal pack. Radiated tortoises are a critically endangered species from Madagascar and one of the most colourful tortoises. They're perhaps even my favourite. I love how they look. I'd really love to see the detail that Frontier would put into the tortoise's carapace as, yeah, they would look brilliant. Southern Rockhopper penguins be a, would be another great addition as they are one of the most distinct looking penguins that does not currently exist in the game. With bright red eyes, a bright orange beak, and distinct yellow tufts above their eyes. That, yeah, but, and they hop up rocks, so... <laughs> That'd be a very interesting penguin to build exhibits for, but they just have a very cool look. I would love to see them. White-faced sakis are another diverse example of primates, particularly monkeys, with the males sporting largely black coloration with a pale face, and the females being, I think, gray all over. But uh, yeah, they would be a cool addition as I've seen pictures of them just lounging in a walkthrough exhibit, and I would love to recreate that in the game. Another arboreal species known for its lounging habits, the North American porcupine. 
a very distinct species of New World Porcupine that is very different to the African Crested Porcupine regarding the arid animal pack. I would love to see Frontier's detail applied to this animal as this one has quills almost all over it compared to the African Crested Porcupine which has them concentrated on the back and rump. Old baboons are another distinct baboon species and were also featured in Zoo Tycoon, the original. So, I mean, potentially getting all of the Zoo Tycoon animals that would make sense for Plant Zoo. And yeah, I, I would love to see that. All the baboons are also a very cool species. One of my most skeptical inclusions here is the Arctic Hare, as I have not really heard of them in captivity. I only know they exist in the wild and will occasionally stand on their hind legs. But I have not really seen too many examples of them exhibited in captivity. I did come across the San Francisco Zoo, which gave me somewhat of hope that I found living Arctic hares, but they're actually just statues at an Arctic exhibit. But if you know any zoos that may hold Arctic hares, let me know in the comments. Bat-eared foxes would be another great insectivorous canid that I would love to see in the game. These guys have a very distinct look. They're, they're largely fluffy and have big ears much like their cousin the fennec fox but they're, they're sort of like the larger equivalent and are often displayed pretty close to their desert cousin in some zoos. Cotton top tamarins are another distinct member of the Calatricidae family similar to the gold lion tamarin but these guys from Colombia are critically endangered and have a very distinct rock star haircut. The Japanese sorau is another species from the Zoo Tycoon game I think included in their endangered species expansion, I think that's what it was called. But either way, they'd be another great Japanese addition to the game. As they have a, they're also very odd to look at too. They're a very interesting looking undulate. Now this is one of the only animals on here that I can sort of agree with as to why people would want it. And I have actually seen the leopard seals that were at Taronga Zoo previously. I was very young at the time, but I was able to see the leopard seals when they were still held there. Um, it was a very great privilege that I've only realized recently to have been able to see a leopard seal in a zoo, as there are none anymore. But either way, the leopard seals at Taronga Zoo were treated with the best care known possible, and potentially with a bit of research and a um, few new ideas put on the table, leopard seals could potentially be sustained in Planet Zoo and would be a great Antarctic addition. Now I know I talked about the South American Kawati and the Latin America pack, but the White Nose Kawati is another great addition to a Central American and Southern states of North America. They also exhibit um, a tendency to wander into the Sonoran Desert every now and then. Unlike the South American Kawati, these guys would probably be able to be placed in a desert habitat. Bighorn sheep too. Though often associated with alpine meadows, the desert bighorn sheep, which is a subspecies, also inhabits desert mountains. So if we were to get a bighorn sheep, I would love to see the desert biome added to their biome lineup. The Grevy zebra would be another great equine addition, as I believe they're the largest of the wild equids. And yeah, they're, they're a very distinct zebra from the plains. As if you don't know the differences, Grevy zebras have much larger ears, they're also much bigger, but they also have much thinner stripes, and their stripes don't go under the belly like the plains does. They're also endangered, so a bit of um, attention to their endangered status would be a great way to introduce them into Plant Zoo. The Nene or Hawaiian Goose would be a great addition as well, as we don't really have any geese, we just got a swan, so potentially reworking the swan rig to accommodate a goose the Hawaiian goose would certainly be my top pick. Another ground fowl species, the Western Capricalia of the European woodlands would be another great addition. The males perform a very unique dance for a grouse. And I mean, I could put the greater sage grouse here too, but the Western Capricalia is my personal favorite of the bunch. Our last habitat animal is one that was also once kept in captivity, the Sumatran rhinoceros an animal that I spoke of in one of my species profiles. And yeah, I'd love to see Frontier bring this animal to life as they are such an odd and interesting animal to learn about. 
And it would be great to tribute to their history in captivity and at the Cincinnati Zoo, as I would love to see these guys represented in a similar way and potentially even sustain better to how they were at the Cincinnati Zoo with Plan Zoo's creativity. And I would love to see what players would do to accommodate this animal in their parks. Moving on to the free update features. I really only have one and that's foliage because I've discussed pretty much every update feature that I could possibly want in the game. So let's begin with the foliage. So there's a long list here as there are very cool plants around the world that I'd love to see. First up we have the bird of paradise plant, the cat's tail aloe, the tree aloe, the snake plant, the Madagascar ocotillo, the Tsar baobab, the venus flytrap, the American Ocotillo, the Horsetail, the Painted Bamboo, the Tiger Grass, the Ginkgo Tree, the Banyan Tree, which is also a species of fig, I believe, the Old Man Banksia, uh, let me get that, the Miola Palm, the Waratah Flower, the Sydney Red Gum, the Tallowwood Eucalyptus, the Spotted Gum, the lacy tree fern, uh, let me get, there we go, the grass tree, the gymea lily, the kangaroo paw, the cacao tree, the jelly palm, the rubber tree, the stone pine, the Norfolk Island pine, and finally the Canary Island pine. All these plants would be great additions to the game as, yeah, they would add a great flavour to animal exhibits and be very cool plants to add a dash of colour and diversity to your foliage in your zoos. And that is the Continental Animal Pack, one of my most ambitious ideas, I should say, as there are a lot of animals in here, but of course not all these animals would make it into one pack, so potentially including them in separate packs or having a selection of animals from this roster, or potentially some other animals. If you have a very different idea to a Continental Animal Pack, or what a final DLC should be, leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video of me just rambling on different animals that I could see in a pack, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed it, leave a like, I do appreciate it. And subscribe, as we have passed a thousand subscribers, and I can't wait to see how, further, how much further the channel will grow from there. And yeah, as for now, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.